Hello guys, welcome to the clinical scenarios and this is your case number 4. So this is a patient who is a 4 year immigrant boy brought by his mother to a medical camp for the evaluation of the inflame, inflamed right eye. There is an inflammation in the right eye. <coughs> he also had a nasal discharge for the past 10 days right then his brother has similar symptoms so what is uh, this has to do that means this disease is an endemic uh, spread because the brother is also having the similar symptoms vital stable there are follicles and inflammatory changes in the conjunctiva in his right eye cornea shows neovascularization what is the most likely diagnosis now i will say that this is a beautiful question and uh, they have given so many evidences which are pointing towards your diagnosis provided that you have a clear concept regarding the different kinds of conjunctivitis now let us see the options first is herpes simplex keratitis orbital cellulitis trachoma and gonococcal conjunctivitis so first of all i will tell you how to proceed from this question and what are the things that you should take note of first important thing is that he is a four year old boy so age group is important here second important thing is that there is a nasal discharge so you have to see that a patient who is a four year boy coming with the inflammation and where you are getting this inflammation they have told you in examination that this inflammation is in conjunctiva now what kind of conjunctivitis it is you are seeing the follicles so that means you have to look for a follicular conjunctivitis you have to look for a follicular conjunctivitis and that follicular conjunctivitis which is common uh, at four years right and which can give you nasal discharge also a follicular conjunctivitis which can give you nasal discharge common at four years of age and can be endemic also because brother is showing you common uh, symptoms similar symptoms and along with this corneal neovascularization so what kind of um, conjunctivitis amongst these four is the one which is a follicular conjunctivitis you know follicular conjunctivitis is mainly viral conjunctivitis this we already know that mainly when i talk about follicular conjunctivitis it is a viral conjunctivitis now for uh, uh, it to be viral conjunctivitis what are the important patterns that you should get so have a look here for uh, it to say that it is a herpes simplex keratitis okay if i want to say that it is a herpes simplex viral keratitis i should have this typical dendritic pattern dendritic keratitis or the dendritic pattern and uh, you know what is the important feature of the true dendrites can you see we have the knobs here so knobs are present here so when i say that it is a dendritic pattern i mean to say that i am talking about the true dendritic pattern and true dendritic pattern means knobs should be present like now if i do not have the knob something like this so here i have knobs absent so if the knobs are absent then it is called as pseudo dendritic pattern and these pseudo dendrites are present in um, acanthamoeba okay it is present in acanthamoeba keratitis or it can be herpes zoster okay now they have not given you any clue about the dendritic pattern whether it is pseudo dendrites or whether it is true dendrites plus you know there are two important things that you get in viral keratitis whenever i am talking about viral keratitis two things are very very important one is the presence of keratic precipitates and second is your decrease corneal sensations decrease corneal sensation so among uh, these two we do not have any clue in the question so if you look at the options here the options they have given first is the herpes simplex keratitis i will say strict no herpes simplex means kps should be there there should be um, 
presence of uh, decreased corneal sensations, dendritic pattern should be there. So, you have a entirely different kind of symptomatology there. Now, let us talk about the orbital cellulitis. Now, what is actually orbital cellulitis? If I talk about the orbital cellulitis, what is the presentation? Now, this can occur in a four-year male, I agree. But this will not lead to follicular conjunctivitis. There will be no follicular conjunctivitis in this case. Okay. Second important thing, endemic. It is not endemic like a brother may not show the similar symptoms because it is an infective condition. So, whoever acquires the infection, only that person is going to show you and orbital cellulitis means the infection of the orbital septum. Okay, so this is actually a acute inflammatory condition and mostly if you see presentation is unilateral proptosis, unilateral proptosis in the children and rather I will say that it is the most common cause of unilateral proptosis in children. So, presentation will not be follicular conjunctivitis with a nasal discharge and it is actually a kind of emergency because you know this can lead to even cavernous sinus thrombosis, cavernous sinus thrombosis. Now, what are the other things that you have to look for in this uh, orbital cellulitis? If the person is having the orbital cellulitis, like inflammation can also lead to the back pressure changes. So, in that case, uh, we can also get the optic disc congestion. We can get the optic disc congestion, which is not provided in the, the, in the options. We can get chemosis. Chemosis means the edema of the Conjunctiva can be there, uh, they can be congestion of the optic disc, chemosis, we have lot of congestion, we have lot of congestion but no corneal vascularization, corneal vascularization is not there and uh, we can also have the extraocular muscle palsy that can also be there. So, uh, the clinical profile of a patient who is having orbital cellulitis is entirely entirely different. So, this is actually not a case of orbital cellulitis. Now, you are left with the trachoma and the gonococcal conjunctivitis. Now, both are common in children. Okay. This is uh, both of them are common in children, but uh, if you talk about this gonococcal conjunctivitis, let us talk about gonococcal. So, if I talk about this uh, gonococcal uh, conjunctivitis, this is actually causing more of ophthalmia neonatorum, ophthalmia neonatorum. This is causing more of ophthalmia neonatorum which is actually bilateral conjunctivitis. It is bilateral conjunctivitis in a neonate. It is occurring in a neonate that is less than 28 days which is occurring in less than 28 days child and it is a purulent conjunctivitis. It is a kind of purulent conjunctivitis, not the follicular conjunctivitis, okay. Plus, it should be in a neonate, not uh, at 4 years. Then, it is showing you bilateral one, okay. Then, it is not, uh, not having any nasal discharge. You are also having a history of nasal discharge. That is not very, very likely in the gonococcal conjunctivitis. Rather, you will have the systemic features, you can have the systemic features which are associated with the gonococcal conjunctivitis like uh, we have the urethritis or we have the arthritis, urethritis, arthritis, right? And uh, if you remember, there is a syndrome called as Ritter syndrome. There is a syndrome called as Ritter syndrome. So, in the Ritter syndrome, there are three things that we usually get. We get um, urethritis. Then we get uh, conjunctivitis and uh, third is your arthritis. Now, this thing is important that uh, the third thing is the conjunctivitis here and this is HLA B27 positive. HLA B27 positive. So, it is one of the DDs uh, when we read that uh, we can have the arthritis along with the uveitis because this patient may or may not present with the 
uveitis. Along with this, uh, there can be uh, what you call as corneal involvement. Now, you know that uh, gonococcus is one bacteria which has the capacity of penetrating the intact cornea. So, you can have the corneal involvement that is plus minus, but not neovascularization uh, per se, it can be just the uh, ulceration. So, corneal neovascularization per se is again not going in the favor of this gonococcal. So, what you are left with? So, what you are left with, we have also ruled out kind of gonococcal. So, your answer is actually trachoma. So, let us see are the features uh, matching with the trachoma. Now, if you talk about uh, the trachoma, okay, first of all, what is the literal meaning of this word trachoma? The word trachoma has come from the word trachom, and trachom means the rough. So, here we have the rough appearance, rough appearance of the conjunctiva. So, here we have the rough appearance of the conjunctiva which can be due to both the things because you know trachoma shows you the mixed response. It shows the mixed response and what is that mixed response? The trachoma shows you both the sago grain follicles. So, it is a follicular conjunctivitis. So, this is going with this and you can also have the papillary hyperplasia, papillary hyperplasia, right. Another important thing is that it is an endemic disease. So, brother can get the similar symptoms. Now, third important thing was your nasal discharge. So, how can we justify this nasal discharge? If this infection is going into the nasopharynx, if this infection is going into the nasopharynx, then that can lead to the nasal discharge also. So, this is going well with the uh, and diagnosis of the trachoma. Now, let us try to see some of the important features with respect to the trachoma. First of all, the trachoma is also called as Egyptian ophthalmia. When you get such kind of uh, questions in the clinical scenarios, maybe you do not get the main word used for that diagnosis and like uh, the, uh, the patient is going into the camp area. So, they may be using their local words. So, that is your Egyptian ophthalmia and trachoma is important because it is the most common infection which is causing the preventable blindness in India and that is the reason that uh, trachoma is actually added in the vision 2020 program also and also your RBSK program. Okay. It is a chronic keratoconjunctivitis. Now, whenever you study about the keratoconjunctivitis, it is important to notify that which conditions are acute conditions, which conditions are chronic conditions. So, this is actually a chronic keratoconjunctivitis and as I told you, it has a mixed response, both the follicular uh, conjunctivitis as well as papillary hyperplasia are seen. Now, it is caused by chlamydia trachomatis. It is caused by chlamydia trachomatis. Another important thing is because you know integrated questions are coming nowadays that it is a obligate intracellular cellular parasite. So, it is neither a bacteria nor a virus, it is a obligate intracellular parasite because it is producing the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. It is producing the inclusion bodies inside the cell called as intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies and these bodies are called as helbus teta provisic bodies. They are very, very important. Many times I have been asked in the form of H P bodies. So, these are called as Halbert Stetler provisic bodies or the H P bodies. All right. Now, coming to the uh, species, we have got A, B, B, A, and C that is actually responsible for the blinding trachoma, which is responsible for the blindness. But uh, when I am talking about uh, the uh, non veneral mode, which is more common in the children. Um, uh, the sorry, the veneral mode, which is more common in children, that is called as the inclusion conjunctivitis because you know uh, the blinding trachoma is spreading from eye to eye. 
So when I am talking about the non-blinding trachoma, that non-blinding trachoma is actually venereal that is called as inclusion conjunctivitis. Now this inclusion conjunctivitis can be present in adults as well as neonates. So we have adult inclusion conjunctivitis, we have neonatal inclusion conjunctivitis and this adult inclusion conjunctivitis is also called as swimming pool conjunctivitis which again give you a very important potential MCQ. All right. Now, let us see quickly what are the signs in the conjunctiva. We have got the upper tarsal and the fornix conjunctiva that is mainly involved. Look at the sago grain follicles. These are the beautiful follicles and how will you differentiate? I am getting the follicles. Now, follicles can be due to adenovirus also. So, how, how will I differentiate? I have uh, the two important things that is your liver cells along with the signs of necrosis. So, I can send it for the histopath and if I am seeing the liver cells, if I am seeing the signs of necrosis, most probably it is trachoma. Then I am getting the papillary hyperplasia, velvety, red, flat topped, that kind of appearance in the palpebral conjunctiva. Then we have got a very, very important thing, scarring in the sulcus subtarsalis. That is called as an arts line. That also remains an important diagnostic feature in cases of trachoma. And then we have concretions, very, very dirty looking uh, because they are like the collections of the dead cells and the debris. And I think these are very, very important features for the diagnosis of the trachoma. Now, still the corneal new vascularization is not hunted. So, what about that? See, here we also get the corneal signs. So, again in the cornea, I will get the follicles. They are same the sago grain follicles because you know but what happens that cornea does not have vascularization cornea is avascular so you will have pits at the site of healing follicles you will have these pits so these are called as herbert pits and i told you before also do not get confused with the horner trenta spots horner trenta spots and herbert pits are quite quite different so herbert pits again is an important diagnostic feature and then what was talked about in the question is the neovascularization that is actually called as a panel so what happens in cases of trachoma there is corneal neovascularization uh, corneal uh, vessels are not there originally but the conjunctival vessels are growing can you see these vessels they are coming from the conjunctiva over the cornea along with the infiltration and if it is going deeper then it can lead to corneal ulcer which is considered to be a complication of trachoma and mind you this is the only it is the only complication of the trachoma because this can lead to blindness by causing the corneal opacity by causing the corneal opacity so now you, we are there with all the signs we have follicular conjunctivitis in a four year male that can occur in this uh, community and nasal discharge due to the infection going to the nasopharynx and corneal neovascularization. So, you are clear with the diagnosis of the trachoma. I hope uh, you have understood how to uh, rule out the other options and how to then correlate our presumptive diagnosis with the available options is the correct way of diagnosing and reaching the right answer of the clinical scenarios. Thank you and happy ophthalmology.